So hi, Microbe Hunter here and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of biotechnology. I'm going to be fermenting some milk because I would like to put kefir under the microscope. Well, what is kefir? Kefir, that is an aggregate of, of fungi and of bacteria and you can buy it and then when you add it to milk, then it will ferment the milk and it will make a very pleasant tasting kefir drink. Um, which then apparently is also good uh, for your health. And as a matter of fact, I've already brought along a picture where I added a little bit of the kefir fungus under the microscope. And you can see that there are these uh, long clusters here. And these are aggregates uh, of bacteria and fungi. Now the bacteria are a little bit difficult to see here. Um, they're kind of small and transparent. So later on, I will be using phase contrast to make them a little bit better visible. In any case, I'm going to first show you how you can make kefir at home as well. And then later on, I'll be putting it under the microscope. And the reason why I like uh, this so much is, is because it is a safe way to actually observe bacteria and also um, fungi. And I think I'm just going to go into my kitchen right now and I'm going to get started. Well, the kefir grains I ordered online, of course. Uh, I did not only order milk kefir, but also water kefir. You have to add some dried fruits and sugar to it. And also kombucha, that's this large fungus uh, that you see over there. And kombucha is essentially fermented tea. I have not tried it yet, but I'm going to try it and I'm going to make a separate video of, uh, of this. The first thing that I wanted to do is, is to remove all of the milk uh, that came with the kefir grains because I wanted to put it under the microscope and I wanted to see the kefir grains uh, um, alone. And those of you who have already made kefir before are probably going to scream right now and say, don't do that. Don't put the kefir grains into a metal sieve. Um, I didn't have a plastic one, unfortunately. Um, it is correct that uh, metals generally are not very good uh, for, uh, yeah, for bacteria and for fungi that you want to use for biotechnology. It might inhibit growth um, a little bit, but I kept the contact time rather short. I poured a little bit of water over it uh, because I wanted to rinse away the milk and because I wanted to have the kefir grains pure for microscopy and that's basically what I got. They will grow um, when you put them in, into milk um, so and sooner or later you'll have so many of them that you probably have to throw some of them away anyway. Well in any case I have now uh, added the kefir grains uh, to uh, milk um, and I simply had to be a little bit patient and let it stand uh, overnight. Um, so what's going to happen is, is that the bacteria and the yeasts are going to start uh, to ferment the milk. They're going to convert uh, the lactose in the milk to lactic acid. A little bit of alcohol is also being produced um, as well, way less than 1%. But after one day, I could already see that the milk started to turn a little bit solid um, and uh, it started to become a little bit like yogurt, very thin yogurt. I mixed it a little bit with a spoon. Of course, you're supposed to use a plastic spoon. I know, I know. Um, but then uh, I wanted to simply drink the milk and in order to do that, um, I poured uh, the kefir uh, with the grains uh, again through the sieve. I rinsed it again and this is basically what I had left over. I'm going to store it in the refrigerator and the milk, well that was actually quite good tasting I have to admit, um, like very thin yogurt um, and depending on the type of uh, kefir culture that you have, um, some of them taste a little bit more acidic, others taste a little bit uh, yeah, more with carbon dioxide. Yeah, there are different types around. Well, here I am already starting with microscopy and uh, I have done the following. I've taken a small kefir grain and I have compressed it under uh, the cover glass uh, to really press it flat to make it very thin for microscopy. Um, and uh, I have to tell you that the result was a little bit uh, disappointing pointing um, at the beginning and um, so trial and error is of course everything also when you're doing microscopy and a little bit of science. Um, therefore I've also taken some of the, the water, the liquid uh, with some of the suspended bacteria and also put it under the microscope. And this brown thing that you see there that is essentially the kefir biofilm and you see it really doesn't look like anything. I could not see individual bacteria um, the reason is, is because many of them were actually clustered together so densely that it was difficult to see the individual cells um, and I increase the magnification of course it looks a little bit blurry but I try to actually get the surface um, um, of the biofilm of the grains the kefir grains uh, but again yeah there was not a lot of detail visible um, I was a little bit disappointed I um, have to admit um, I wanted to see a little bit uh, also the fungus yeah, not so much visible um, either um, I did some focusing around and I 
then then took some of the liquid and this is where it actually uh, got a little bit better here the clusters were not as large uh, but uh, a little bit smaller um, but still I was not able to see the individual bacteria and the individual fungi as well because they were sticking together and therefore it was kind of difficult to see the individual cells even when I increased the magnification at the same problem um, so essentially the technique uh, the contrasting technique that I used was uh, probably not uh, the best one and uh, therefore I used phase contrast and um, in phase contrast the bacteria they become much more visible they appear now dark on a slightly brighter background and you could also see the larger cells which are the fungi probably yeasts um, which are also part uh, of this uh, of, of, of the kefir grain yeah and uh, some of the bacteria were moving around a little bit and these are lactic acid bacteria and many other different species as well um, and uh, they are essentially converting now all of the nutrients or some of the nutrients in the milk to lactic acid and this kind of makes sure that the milk uh, is not only becomes more storable um, but all because of the acid and the, the small amount of alcohol um, but it also gives uh, kefir its typical taste of course there are different uh, types of kefir around depending on which uh, culture you have and in also different regions of the world uh, they also have a different uh, yeah they produce different tasting kefir so I can imagine that uh, if I would have uh, obtained a different kefir culture maybe the composition would have been again a little bit different so for today I think it's again enough I hope that you liked the video if you did then I would really invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you can also keep yourself updated and I would also, of course, like to thank my Patreon supporters, of course, uh, who make uh, videos like this possible. I do also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, and uh, this way you can always keep yourself updated. Happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time, and bye-bye.